OK, we're going to take a look at transformations of exponential functions, but let's take a look at how we graph an exponential function. Right, so let's do two, a base of 2 to the power x. If we graph this, OK, I've got a table right down here. Let's start at the bottom here. When x is 3, what well, can you see? 2 to the power 3 equals 8. So I will have a point 3, 8. It's actually not on here because it's off the graph. How about the uh, the second one? OK, when x is 2, so 2 to the power 2 is 4. So we have that, OK? And there it is on the graph. Right, uh, 2 to the power 1 is 2. Again, there it is on the graph. And anything to the power 0. So 2 to the power 0 is 1. So even if I have a base of 3 to the x, 4 to the x, e to the x, if I raise these to the power of 0, I will always get a 1, again, if the exponent is 0, OK? So that point there is on every exponential graph, as long as it hasn't been transformed, just with the base and the exponential, OK? Right, let's go into our negative exponents. So when x equals negative 1, well, that means 2 to the negative 1, which is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 1, which is why we get the half, OK? So that's why that is on the graph right there, OK? OK, let's take a look at the next one. 2 to the power negative 2. So 2 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 2, which is why we have the 1 fourth right there, OK? Let's just erase this just so we get too much going on. So that's why I'm getting all these points, OK? So that I can graph the exponential function 2 to the x, OK? Finally, let's just take a quick look, look at this one, negative 3. Again, 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over 2 to the positive 3, which is why we have the 1 eighth, OK? Let's just get rid of this. OK, so that's how we've graphed 2 to the x. Now let's take a look at some of the transformations on here. I'm going to erase all this now just to kind of tidy it up. In fact, I'm going to erase all the points on here as well. OK, so there we go, nice and clear. So let's take a look at this here. Right, a negative in front. Remember that that's a reflection over the x-axis. And that's why it looks like this. That's all that is. OK, reflection over the x-axis. The next one is going to be a reflection over the y-axis. Let's take a look. There it is. 2 to the negative x, reflection over the y-axis. Do remember that 2 to the negative x is the same as 1 half to the positive x. OK, and again... That's why it kind of looks like this and not this, OK? When we have a base somewhere in between 0 and 1, OK? Right, so reflection over the y-axis. Let's move on to the next one. Hopefully you can see that is just an upward movement of 3. So up 3 units. Let's take a look. Here it is. OK, so let's take a look at this. There is our 0, 1. If I move it up 3, can you see I'll now be at 0, 4, OK? If I have a point here, OK, again, if I move it up 3, that'll take me up to 5. That's all it is, OK? So a vertical movement of 3. Right, on to the next one. Hopefully you can see this is the left and right movement. This is going to be, think about it, 3 to the left. Let's take a look. There it is. OK, so again, here's the original, 0, 1. If I move it a 1, a 2, a 3 to the left, take a point here, move it a 1, 2, 3 to the left. OK, so that there, that's a left movement of 3 units. Finally, this one um, is just showing, remember, the horizontal stretching. Sorry, vertical, vertical stretching, OK? of 3. And so let's take a look at this one. And there it is again. Here is 0, 1. OK. The 1 goes up to 3. OK. Let's take a look at this. 2 for the y coordinate. The 2 will go up to 6. OK. Again, vertical stretching of a factor of 3. OK. That's that.